Hey everyone, thanks for checking us out here on SSP TV. We're back at the Mohegan Sun Pocono inside 105 The River for music on the menu, the TV version. It's our third edition and I'm happy to be back here with Alan Stout who's been hosting this radio show for many, many years. We have some special guests with us tonight in memory of Janet Train. I should say Jane Train, right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, we have Vicki Giuliano, one of the uh, good friends of Janet's, and also Jason McClough, and you actually were involved in the accident that we're going to hit on tonight. So, guys, thank you so much for having me in here. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank and you. Alan, we're going to start with you because you were very good friend, friends with Janet, and we've talked about Janet's story um, on some of your radio shows before here on Music on the Menu. So, you know, for the viewers of maybe uh, my listeners and the watchers of SSP TV, just fill us in on the story that is going on. Well, Janet was um, a very well-known singer in the area. She mm -hmm. had played in a very popular band, M80, for mm -hmm. quite a few years. Prior to that, she was an accomplished singer. She was uh, on tour with Liz Fair and did the Lilith Fair. And um, she did a solo album a couple years ago, had people from Seven Dust and Guns N' Roses and Breaking Benjamin playing on it as guest musicians and co-writers. So she was very respected here in, in town as a musician and as a vocalist, but she was also loved. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was just, she would light up a room, you know, she knew so many people. Uh, by first name, you know, and she wasn't one of these singers that was in the back before she went on and went on stage and was huddled up in the backstage area. She would out, be out mingling with people and she got to know a lot of the people that came out to see her and uh, working with the group Adrenaline Mob, I was their road manager back in July. They were involved in a, a horrible accident in Florida and um, one gentleman was killed, a, 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 a gentleman named David Z. Mm -hmm. And then about five weeks later, Janet also died from her injuries, and so um, it's kind of knocked the wind out of a lot of us. It's still hard to get our head around it. Mm -hmm. And you've been celebrating her life um, right after she was involved in the accident. I remember being here and you talking about doing these fundraisers uh, throughout the community, and most of the money is going to uh, towards the the band members that were sure. affected, but also it's going to be set up for a scholarship fund for young musicians? Yeah, the benefit that we did a few weeks ago at the Woodlands was originally planned in July. Mm -hmm. We had hoped that, that Jana would be there. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't know, if, well, maybe not be there, but, you know, be getting better and aware of it. And we'd be sending her the love. We kind of figured maybe she'd be down in Florida recovering for a couple of months. Uh, when she passed away, we just basically kept kept the show as a memorial and a tribute to her and decided to set up a scholarship fund for young musicians. And so that's where a large portion of the money will be going from the show we did a couple weeks ago at the Woodlands. Okay, so Jason, you were actually involved in the accident. You were one of the members on, you were the driver involved in, in the accident, which would happen in Florida, correct? Yes. And I know the community, even if you knew Janet personally or you knew her just professionally with going to see her perform, uh, she really did light up a room and she really did bring a strong personality to anyone that, that she met. So, first of all, how are you doing? I'm uh, doing good. I'm uh, mentally better than I've ever been. Good. Physically, I'm, uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So. And what would you like everyone to know as far as remembering the life of Janet and also the other band member who you know, passed away from that accident. And the, the, the weird thing with both of them, David and Janet, they were so positive, mm -hmm. so positive. And like I said, e literally either one of them can take a bad situation between two people. They can come in between and you was able to both walk away thinking you were both right and everybody's friends. And I actually bought David uh, in Arizona. I bought him a little Yoda Arizona driver's license because I told him he had the force and uh, Star Wars fans will understand that. <laughs> yeah. How was your response, or how do you feel the community has been as far as their outreach to you, their outreach in response to this horrific event? I'll tell you what, it's, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it really is, it's overwhelming. So much help, so much love, so much, I mean, people reaching out, helping me, I mean, just 
even a positive word on Facebook through Messenger can help. Mm -hmm. I realize that now. Mm -hmm. And I can't say anything. I, 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 I love this community. I do. Yeah. Now, Vicki, you were very good friends with, with Janet. Janet. Yeah. How did you meet? We met at a wedding. Okay. And it was just, you're attracted to her like a magnet. Mm -hmm. And you're right, she's this incredible force. And it's like, like the light shines and you want to, you want to get to know her. Now it's interesting because Alan was supposed to have Dawn on the show and she was one of the organizers of the fundraiser, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And Dawn couldn't make it today because of her, her job obligation, so that's where you stepped in. But it's kind of ironic because you guys have known each other and you actually met through Janet. Janet, Janet or, met Jason okay, through me. Through you, okay, so yes. you've all been friends. Yes. 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 So how did that happen? Uh, well, Janet we, and I went to a Guns N' Roses concert. Okay. Oh, how we? Uh, uh, how many years ago yeah, was that? That I was don't, actually five eight, years ago. No, that was eight years. ago. Was that ago. the no. one here in town at the arena? Five years ago. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was it five? Oh, longer. Six. Yeah, it was so. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it was eight. I was fresh oh, out of yeah. the hospital. No, I'm thinking <laughs> oh, okay, closer yes. to eight. They've all, all known right. each other for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. And Alan, you knew Janet for a long time too. How did you guys meet? I got to know her through my. Um, writing about music for newspapers. You know, I wrote a music column for 15 years and I did stories about M80, her old band. Mm -hmm. I wound up doing a story about her last solo album, the uh, Diary record that came out in 2014. And we also did a very big charity concert at the Woodlands every April for many years and Janet was always a part of that with M80. After M80 came on the scene, they were part of it. I'd say the last maybe four or five years we did Concert for a Cause. Uh, Janet was there with, with that band and a big part of that because her band was very popular mm -hmm. and so the success of the show, um, she had a big part of it. I remember going to see Janet perform in M80 and uh, you know it's, it's really, it's amazing of the talent that comes out of this area and you know Janet not only was a musician but she also was involved in movies. She was an extra in movies and on TV shows. She was in Gotham, many episodes of Gotham, and she uh, was in a movie, uh, mm, Men in Men Black, Black 3. 3. She was in the restaurant scene. Yeah. She, she made many appearances. She was an actress as well. So the, the setup with, is it Jane Jam? Was that, is that the name of the, the fundraiser? Jane Jam. Yeah. Yeah. Jane Jam. Uh, what are you hoping that this, uh, the community can get out of this as far as fundraising? Um, efforts are concerned. What would you like to get out of this fundraising effort? I think it's amazing that we're going to pay it forward for mm -hmm. Janet and I think Jason and I both agree that you know the only way to keep her alive now is to to continue to be that positive driving force for everybody that Janet was for anybody that she touched whether you knew her for many years or five minutes. And the blood will dry underneath my nails, and the wind will rise up and fill my sails. So you can't doubt, and you can't hate, but I.
Now, Don Rodazzo uh, said that there's a GoFundMe page set up in Janet's name that was set up by the family. Yes. Um, that people can still donate to and that you guys are working on a memorial that's going to be set up through the Luzerne Foundation so people can still donate to this. Because I know people in this area, how can I help? They really, really are genuinely concerned. And, you know, um, e you know, even for you, Jason, I know that you're you're sitting here and amazingly my my mouth dropped when you told me the extent of your injuries because you have had several surgeries and you know yes. you've had extensive you know injuries to your body yes I am, and he's still standing um yes his second still chance stand, at life <laughs> still standing yes um do you want to share any of you know the the similarities i, I believe you had an incident happen to you years before well it's funny because she just said still standing i had a brain aneurysm okay. that erupted on me in a body pump class and that's I knew Vicki for a long time before but we became better friends she caught me basically she I, caught you yeah. yeah. she's a little peanut <laughs> yeah, yeah Vicky's Vicky's a little girl and a big guy fell on her but uh, anyways uh, that's I, I how do you look at life now? Because I always think of that when I talk to people who've really gone through, wow, like, you're still here. Do you look at life differently, and how, how do you look at life differently? Yes, I do. Because, like I said, I'm a better man today than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm more positive, more open-minded. Mm -hmm. And the tour that we went on, it was amazing, seeing the country the way I saw it. I ate a potato out of the ground in Idaho. Why? Because I was in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a great respect for life in general. You know. So. It's How's your health? Where are you from 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 here on in? Do you have another? Do you have any other surgeries coming up, or how are you doing? I'm not sure if I have any other surgeries coming okay. up. Maybe. Um, I'm, like I said, mentally in the best place I've ever been. Okay. Uh, and physically, I'm getting back. I am. I'm slowly bringing sexy back. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I don't know anyone with a better outlook on life than someone who beat, it, beat death twice. That's, that's amazing. Your story is really amazing. What I wanted to say was, what was the coincidence? Um, after the aneurysm, they had t-shirts made. Mm -hmm. I was standing on the Natural History Museum in New York with my arms in the air. Somebody took a picture of me, and uh, a great friend of ours, Emil Feist, he made t-shirts, is still standing. Mm -hmm. Well now, I want to get a few made for a few special people oh. that I love that says, same exact t-shirt, still standing with a big red times two. I love it, <laughs> I love it. And Alan, you've been you know, very instrumental in this, and I, I know, like I said, you've known Janet for many, many years. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts moving forward and you know, keeping Janet's memory alive? as you've been doing through Music on the Menu, through Janet's music? Well, you know, what we've tried to do uh, on the show here is, you know, we've always played her music. When, when the record came out, Diary Record, we played the whole thing that night. I, I found, you know, it's, it's hard. You know, I found a, a message from her mm -hmm. that she sent me, I guess, the day after that show aired, you know, and it's appreciative of what we had done that night and just a sweet sweet little note that she had written and you know what I've tried to do is take what she did with music the the interview that I did with her for the weekender that was the cover story three years ago we, we put that up online so that people could read that that's on the the Jane Jam Facebook page the most important thing that I think we're doing is paying it forward is the scholarship mm -hmm. you know uh, we will take the money from the Jane Jam event and we're working with the Luzerne Foundation to create a music scholarship for young people that want to study music and I heard amazing stories about Janet after she passed that, uh, from quite a few people that she would go to their homes and work with their children on, on vocal lessons and things like that so not even having known that when we kind of came up with the idea for the our, our good friend Don Rendazzo for the, um, the scholarship it really just seemed like the stars aligned there Mm -hmm. That was something that Janet would absolutely love. And Vicky, you, you you said something uh, while we were during the while we were at the break about Janet and you know what she did for the community. Now all these people are coming forward and they have such great stories. So if you could just share that with us. Yeah, because 
you know, when someone makes an impact on your life, mm -hmm. it, it's not something you go and scream from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. It's something that you, you hold near and dear to your heart and you appreciate. You know, and, and now that Janet's gone, so many people are coming forward and saying, this is what she did for me. This is why I love her. And, and it's so nice to hear all of the amazing things that she did to help people, you know, either if they were hurting, she tried to help them, you know, she, if they were hurting, she tried to help them. If, if they, she needed someone, she raised everyone up. She raised everyone up. She made them smile, she made them feel good, and um, people are now coming forward with stories they never shared before, and it's, it's a lot of feel good stuff, and it's a lot of pay it forward, and everybody is coming together saying, well, this is what she did for me, and I want everyone to know, and I want everyone to feel good, and I want sure. to do it for everyone else, so. Yeah. I love that, I didn't know her personally, but you can definitely hear and feel that through Janet's music. I will say that. So you can definitely feel that emotion uh, through her music. So I want to thank you guys for sharing your stories with us. This is kind of a melancholy show for us, Alan. We're usually a little more uplifting, but you know, putting a positive spin on on what has happened. We're not and crying, so that's I know <laughs> we we didn't make them cry, Alan. So I'm very happy about that. Um, so again, thank you guys. Uh, tonight, um, you know, switching gears a little bit, we are here at Mohegan Sun Pocono, and every uh, Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month, you actually have a live band perform at Breakers and you broadcast that. So we do. what's tonight's and, band know, that we're going to hear? The ironic thing about it, and I, I just really realized this a day or two ago, but the last time I think I saw Janet was here at Breakers at Music on the Menu Live. She came up to see, I How think, crazy. Aaron Fink play. And uh, so it just shows her who she was too. You know, she came out and saw other people. She was friends. Aaron was playing. She came up to check it out. And that was the last time I saw her. And, you know, we'll be here tonight, as we are every Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month, with uh, a group called No Vacancy, a really good band from Wyoming Valley. Very good. Again, the, the GoFundMe page will be up for Janet, uh, set, set up by her family, and a memorial fund is set up with the Luzerne Foundation. We'll be providing more information on music on the menu and also on music on the menu on SSPTV. We'll see you next time. Please welcome No Vacancy.
remember was only at the top. It's a long way down. 